Fantastic. Yes. So. Hi, Lachlan. Hi. Hey, it's so great <laughs> yes. to meet you yes. in this context. Good, good to meet you. Yes. So, um, maybe we should just start by I'm introducing our. You know, I have one 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 question. Um, one pretty uh, heavy or loaded question to start us off. So you're a cancer survivor. Yeah. And um, it was cancer that made you think of time in a different way. And I read your book, and there are particular moments that I find are very telling. For example, when you had gotten a uh, prognosis that you were sick, and uh, you were angry at perhaps not living the same amount of time that somebody who wasn't sick would live and that you would go to the movie theater and uh, try to buy a ticket but you wouldn't get the reduced rate that is given to seniors. So in a sense that's a very telling narrative for me in your work where it shows the need for thinking about um, um, time in a different way, a subjective t way, but also one that incorporates aspects of health and society. Yeah. yeah, so that's such an interesting way to bring up the, the thing. I mean, there's so many things to say about that. Thank you for raising it in such a beautiful way. First of all, I try not to identify as a cancer I'm survivor, <laughs> first yes. of all, yeah. because it's kind of embarrassing. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, also um, because I hope, uh, <laughs> no, bringing this up in no, 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 it's totally okay. who okay. started okay. it. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, okay. But also, a lot of my friends mm -hmm. didn't survive, mm -hmm. and so it feels like I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I I never know quite quite how to how to think about think that. About it. You know. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there's no other alternative that is, have is, come across. Are those dilemmas tied to? thinking about temporality so um but well so in particular the issue of prognosis that you mm -hmm. raised um i think in some ways when i first started writing this and i wasn't intending for it to be a book mm -hmm. but i started writing about that little moment that little number of what it is to get a prognosis mm -hmm. you know and it usually comes in the form of you have you know a 30 percent chance of living for five years for example or 90 percent or 10 percent mm -hmm. And people were being given these numbers, and nobody knew what they meant, mm -hmm. you know? And it would mean mm -hmm. one thing in one context and one thing in another context. Mm -hmm. And then it would be juxtaposed with, okay, you're getting chemotherapy. It has this much chance of working, mm -hmm. you know? So I'd read a statistic that said, okay, mm -hmm. well, if you take the chemotherapy, it'll increase your, your survival, your, your lifetime by five mm -hmm. months. Mm -hmm. And I was like, five months? That's right. like not right. very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I took it to my oncologist, mm -hmm. and he was like, well... Actually, it either works or it doesn't work. So average I five see. months, yeah, oh, but I it'll see. maybe be 20 years okay. or it'll maybe be nothing, Okay. you know? Okay. Um, so I started I to just be inundated with all of these different numbers that kind mm -hmm. of meant nothing mm -hmm. and kind of meant everything. Right. And mm -hmm. it was kind of all you had to grasp onto. Mm -hmm. And I started to try and understand those in the context of a lifespan, in the context of these forms that we have that are so um, naturalized. Mm -hmm. But we never even really think about them. Yeah. You save for retirement. You uh -huh. have a child at a certain age and save mm -hmm. for their college. You, whatever it is mm -hmm. that... Um, that insurance companies and... Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. even that we think mm -hmm. of like, oh, I'm 40 years old, I should have done this and this, mm -hmm. and, or whatever, mm -hmm. like in certain middle class mm -hmm. ideologies, mm -hmm. right? So I started using those to then juxtapose mm -hmm. what it was to be sick, what it was to know people who were dying, um, and how they could kind of be used as foils mm -hmm. to, I mean, really make both of them disintegrate in different ways or reflect differently on, on each other. On one. each other, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Which yeah. is so different yeah. from, um, from the kind of close mm -hmm. historical mm -hmm. readings that you've been doing with the tenth of the second, right. and then looking at these debates. Right, yes, um, yeah. No, no. So how would you think about it, in a way personally, but very different, mm. like historically? Yes. Yeah. Well, they, they uh, you know, you, you're right. Our work has very different, um, very different flavors and we hide in different ways behind the, the <laughs> words and, 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 and the pages. Um, 
and I could, you know, and, and, and per perhaps I, I just, I'm harder, it's harder for me to know myself. But one of the images of time that has come up again and again in my mind uh, has nothing to do with clocks, has nothing to do with skulls. But this is how, you know, it's through that image that I read your work, and it is through that image that I, that I understand my own work on Einstein Bergson and the Tenth of a Second. And this is a painting that is in the Prado Museum in Madrid, and it was painted by Goya. And it's called Saturn Eating His Children. And um, uh, it's a very shocking painting. It's an old man that is tearing apart a small little body. And it's a, it's a metaphor for time. So Saturn in Greek mythology represented time. He was the personification, um, uh, the Roman personification of the Greek god of, of Cronus. But it's a completely mm. different um, Greek and Roman ancient way of understanding time that again has nothing to do with the clock, nothing to do with the calendar as uh, um, uh, hom homogenized, chopped up um, time spans. It has to do with eating and, and cannibalism. And it has to do with raising new generations or preventing them to, from, from, from growing. So that's why Saturn eating his children is really the metaphor of you know, the difficulties in time uh, arising and passing and, and, uh, and letting new re generations uh, rise. So, so when I think about, and obviously that notion of time resonates a lot personally uh, with me, and it, it, it resonates in terms of my scholarship. So um, Einstein and Bergson, I mean, just, just, just quickly, yeah, Einstein yeah. and Bergson kind of symbolize two different modern ways of understanding time, two conflicting notions. One of them is the time of clocks, the other one's lived time, the time of the universe, um, uh, the time of our lives. And throughout the 20th century, they've uh, crossed each other. Uh, you can go back and, and think of these dilemmas in terms of Heraclitus and Parmenid. Um, but they're all very modern. They're both very modern. And mm -hmm. as I wrote this book, I didn't want to cite on get on one side or, or the other probably close to to the, to the feeling that you know the the feeling of um, uh, when you look at a statistic it's not just this objective confronting the, mm -hmm. the the subjective but it's rather an entirely different mix so I didn't I wasn't convinced by either Einstein's view or Bergson's view I didn't want to write about time in terms of you know essentializing or um, um, exalting the now in contrast to the planetary or geological or universal uh, time. But the image then of Saturn and this alternative notion um, helped me frame and get control of these other um, um, available ways of understanding time that, uh, that are in our discourse, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, mm -hmm. do you... It's just, uh, yep. just that, yep. just that image is so fascinating. Saturn eating his children, in the sense that we tend to think of, at least Americans, of children being so much the future. Any political mm -hmm. campaign, you just mm -hmm. use a child mm -hmm. and you're all set, mm -hmm. like a shark, you know. Mm -hmm. And at the mm -hmm. same time, so much of that personification of the children is also about consumption, like mm -hmm. consuming for our children, buying an SUV right. so they mm -hmm. stay safe. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Buying them Meeting a private those school education, I mean, everything, and it's like so many yeah. resources. Yeah. And so the idea of him yeah. consuming them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is just mm -hmm. so fascinating mm -hmm. in that in that Thanks. context. And eating you know? them, um, uh, because it's about time. Is you know, it's about racing. It's about caring. And this is what I want to stress with uh, bringing the cake. It's about sharing. Um, uh, I'm very you know. Part of the interesting thing about this format is that we have the audience sharing their time with us mm -hmm. uh, and us uh, sharing their, our time with the other people that are dialoguing. And in a sense, by not sharing our conversation with them, we're, we're being impolite and it makes it a little bit of a, a tense um, a relation interesting um, it's like being a sibling, and the audience is exactly. our mother, and we want their attention. <laughs> we want to, yes. 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 Totally. That's what we're playing with. 
Into something we shouldn't. Yeah. Mommy, if we give you cake. We play. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's um yeah. Yeah. And but the, you know the so 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 one of the the things that I'd like to to think more about are these invisible makers of time. So the visible ones are, you know, the statistics, the clocks, the 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 um, um, the goals that you have to meet when raising a child and buy him this and buy him the new car when he goes to college and pay pay for that. But um, those are the the aspects that 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 we see that are on TV, that are on advertisements. But what we don't see are the, the invisible makers, the people who actually raise them. We don't see the technologies that we use all the time and that by being used all the time, like for example, a chair, a glass, a table, they actually are more part of our making of time because they're, they're parasitical to time in a sense. And so we, but we focus on, on the clock. What do you mean parasitical to time? Um, well, I think I, I, I mean, when, as a historian of technology, it's it's it continues to amaze me how we focus on these salient objects, you know, the clock, the wristwatch, um, uh, the atomic clock, you know, um, but we overlook the pen, the paper, the cake, the glass, the chair, and these are the places and the technologies where we spend our lives and that we use to raise new generations and that we use in order to create a world mm -hmm. in terms of human relations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's what permits us to, to have a conversation. Um, so I was sort of fascinated by something in what you're saying made me think of that moment in your book where you're talking about the length of a meter Mm -hmm. And how at first it was a very specific base 10 mathematical division of the diameter of the world, right? Mm -hmm. The Earth. Mm -hmm. And then it turned out that maybe it wasn't, and how could mm -hmm. you really know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all of that. So then it turned out to be what seemed like a completely mm -hmm. random mm -hmm. number of wavelengths mm -hmm. of a certain mm -hmm. spectrum mm -hmm. in the light, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no. I'm just afraid if you could talk for a second about no. like light mm -hmm. and measuring mm -hmm. light in terms mm -hmm. of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's mm -hmm. such an interesting mm -hmm. kind of overlap mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. um, what we tend to think of as very different kinds of materials. Uh, um, yes, I mean, the it is a fascinating episode of, you know, summarizing in history of science right now what is the way that we conceive time? What is, what is time according to sci science? And yeah. that's basically Einstein's theory of relativity. And space and time are um, uh, part of the same uh, fabric of the universe. And the measure of time is light. So light is used to measure um, uh, lengths as well as times by the, by the frequency. It's the same aspect. And from that, we know that the universe is curved, we get to general relativity. But what I want to do again, you know, with that, knowing that history and, and teaching that history and it being the standard um, uh, way of understanding time in the universe, to again step back, historicize it, say, well, yes, this is true, but it just happened at a certain moment where we also use light for many other things. And that's not a coincidence. Um, uh, this would have not happened in a way, in a world in which we don't have electricity for illumination and mm -hmm. in a world in which we don't use electricity and light for telecommunications. Um, um, this redefinition of time in terms of the speed of light happened in 1907, was one of the first attempts, and then in 1967 it became the standard, the standard, the international uh, standard. How, you know, again, you know, how do we think about it if we really, really go and consider radically different ways of understanding time? like going back to the image of Saturn eating his, his children. There's absolutely no place in that contemporary orthodox understanding of time for any notion of caring, 
raising, reproducing, loving, conversing, basically the, the INGs, you know, the gerund aspects mm -hmm. of, of, yeah. uh, of, of time. And there's no place as well for these, the, the invisible makers of time, the invisible technologies that make time in another way for us. Okay. So okay, so that's super interesting. So so the way one of the ways I was looking at time in thinking about cancer treatments was in randomized control trials. Mm -hmm. And we can look at that mm -hmm. in my slide actually. Your graph. Yeah. No. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know how I can get my slide. I think we need to point it over here. There we go. Okay, so now I turned it off. Yeah. There. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, so one of the things I was really interested in is how, you know, the researcher will set up a trial, mm -hmm. and he or she will say, okay, I'm going to measure survival rates when I give this mm -hmm. drug. So they'll measure it. What's really interesting in thinking about the history of those is they, in fact, have hardly improved survival rates at all. So right. then you have to look at, I think, you have to look at that form then as a sort of promissory form, as a form that sets out a future for people mm -hmm. in an effort to, I mean, in, an, in the effort of medicine to bring about that future, to but also future. to mm -hmm. bring people into the trial and say, look, right. there's a chance here that exactly. you might, we're not going to tell you that it's never actually worked before over hundreds of, you know, mm -hmm. 50 years, but... Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing it does is it sets up this radical distinction between the researcher mm -hmm. or the mm -hmm. researcher as mm -hmm. the representative of science who will exactly. always already mm -hmm. survive the trial. the trial. And all the people going through, through who it. Mm -hmm. virtually none of them no. will survive so, it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So there's yeah. a kind of, you know, I just, yeah. for lack of yeah. a better word, called it a kind of right. immortal time and then exactly. the mortal yes. time. Yes, yeah, I think, I mean, we could put it in terms of, you know, the researcher in our conversation would would be represent Einstein's time. And the person who's going it is probably thinking of time more in terms of eating, surviving, racing. Except not quite, not because mm -hmm. Einstein's mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. I feel like the medical, the mm -hmm. immortal medical time has mm -hmm. their eye on this idea also of progress mm -hmm. or like mm -hmm. an implicit, mm -hmm. implicit idea mm -hmm. of a lifespan that everyone would get to live out. Would like everyone to. would get to mm -hmm. die of something else mm -hmm. if this drug works. Right, right, right. But yes. with Einstein, yeah. it's like totally out in space. Yeah. Like yeah. it has yeah. no bearing whatsoever on even that. It's right. like we're just right. little yes. pieces of dust yeah. or yeah. something. Yes, yes. You know? Yes. Kind of. It's like yeah, yeah. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I, no, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me, tell me, um, one of the, another thing that, that um, when we talked about selecting this document, and um, and aspects of your book that shocked me and 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 um, I found very interesting was this this idea that they would tell you if you they would ask you if you wanted a more aggressive treatment yeah and um, um, basically a lot of the people who are not the researcher you know and are not living in the temporality of that researcher. Um, equate more aggressive with success. Right, right. But that there's absolutely no correlation in, in terms of, a, you know, s something that backs up the idea. And you, you, you sort of make us think about how a society that's really base, based on, on violence and that winning generally is about strength makes us confuse uh, aggress aggression with, with cure. Yeah, it was really bizarre because once I start to, started to read the stacks and stacks of oncology literature and trials and editorials and all the rest of it, I started to notice that this term aggression that we use mm -hmm. so often in the lay discourses about cancer, mm -hmm. like, oh, is they had a particularly mm -hmm. aggressive, aggressive cancer. Yes. Or okay. mm -hmm. They died of a rare aggressive cancer or, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, she had the most aggressive treatment. Mm -hmm. Like the, it, even in oncology, it doesn't mm -hmm. really mean have, that have much, it, and yeah, and yeah. often it just refers to the side effects, which are you know terrible okay. side effects, and also the shortened lifetime li lifespan of the well of the person. Yeah, what I found kind of interesting was mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. there was nothing, really, virtually nothing, on the injuries mm -hmm. that resulted from the treatments, treatments. and mm -hmm. so um, mm -hmm. so. 
On the one hand, mm -hmm. yeah, that makes mm -hmm. sense. They're kind of cast aside because mm -hmm. we're most, you know, you have to go mm -hmm. into these, you know, maybe the more horrific treatment mm -hmm. you give, the better it'll... And that's been the philosophy of chemotherapy since mm -hmm. the 1960s, yes, yes, you know? Yes, yes. It's like, well, if yeah. some works, yeah. more is going to work yeah. better. Yeah. 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 But as a result, um, there's been very little research on... on, on on the effectiveness of aggression as a treatment for lengthening life lifespan. Yeah, exactly. And then also the complete illusion of any of the other parts, as you say, mm -hmm. around care mm -hmm. that go mm -hmm. into, into making that happen. Like happen. The person who does the driving to the chemotherapy Absolutely. treatment or helps the person afterwards. Yes. Or any of that is yes. in these randomized control right. trials, for example, Completely alive. So, you know, this fractional survival rates are so small that, in fact, those could be huge aspects. Absolutely. Of the work. And the wanting to live, right? The wanting to live aspect of survival. Yeah, I know. I always go back and forth between with that because, yeah, that's got to be part of it. On the other hand, it's just not about that. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Yeah, yeah, that's the confrontation, yeah. right, between the uh, our sort of split selves in terms of thinking yes. constantly of the... Yes, and it's also that kind of constant c counterfactual that's, that's yes. coming to play, like, yes. what caused mm -hmm. it anyway? Was it this? Was it right. this? Was it that time? Right. That, you know, mm -hmm. and nothing, mm -hmm. le you know, very little legally mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. medically mm -hmm. is helping us figure that out, that out. Um, let alone regulation regulationally in the U.S. Would you think that you know, a conference, an academic conference, a dialogue, that really, the, that the work then that needs to be done should start by exploring radically different notions of time that do not fall into these, these opposite poles of the lived and the subjective, mm. that starts to include nursing, um, uh, care, the driving, the, that starts to perhaps give different weights to different people in terms of how much they can take uh, yeah. pain. Certainly a recognition of that, as well as a real recognition about people dying in their 30s and 40s, for example, mm -hmm. like way exactly. earlier than they should. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that that's... That it's also an invisible... Yeah. yeah, 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 and the, the, Part those of the population. people don't feel so yeah. excluded from yes. everything mm -hmm. about it, mm -hmm. might be, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also a recognition of the role mm -hmm. of uncertainty mm -hmm. in both the cause mm -hmm. and the uncertainty around yes. treatments, like mm -hmm. really recognizing yeah, that, mm -hmm. instead of hiding behind these seemingly specific numbers, Num yes. would I think totally, totally change, change the, 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 the discourse and their mm -hmm. understanding. Yeah, like what yeah. it is to yeah. do research, yeah. what it is to live in, live yeah. in that as yeah. a caretaker or as a patient. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Good. Good. Definitely. Good. We're there. Definitely. Do you, Do you want to explain the the image? Oh yeah. Um, so that image yeah. um, is an image taken from just a short article written mm -hmm. by Stephen Jay Gould, who mm -hmm. was a very famous biologist who taught at um, Harvard and wrote popular books like the Panda's Thumb and others. Um, and he had been diagnosed with um, uh, mesothelioma, abdominal mm -hmm. mesothelioma which he may have got from working with asbestos in the lab, or okay. I don't really know, it's quite um, early when he was 40, and his doctor gave him the prognosis mm -hmm. that he said the, the median survival is eight months with this mm -hmm. cancer. Mm -hmm. He ended up living for another 25 years or so. Wow, for yeah. eight months. <laughs> but he wrote no, this fascinating, no. like a two-page article, no. and he, ri he writes mm -hmm. basically... Um, kind of ex tries to explain what those statistics mean, mm -hmm. and he tries to mm -hmm. maintain hope in the face of in those the statistics. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but what was interesting... And to wrap himself, his own experience, uh, uh, give, a, give it a scientific framework yeah. that works. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and he's saying, you know, just because... You know, just because you know, half the people die at, the, at that stage, you know, there's still the whole right side of the graph, the graph. and it's tapering mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. But it's, mm -hmm. it is kind of interesting because he's basically saying to everybody, well, you could be in that right exactly. side. Exactly. But of course, but you, you can't, can't. be. <laughs> so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This so is it's wonderful. kind of raised that really interesting yeah. point yeah. about, yes, yeah. each person could be yeah. 
I think it's way. also reflected in how it uses representational images. Yeah. And uh, the warrior and the, the warrior. skull. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and how that is superposed to the scientific graphs that we all that we all know. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that warrior rhetoric is so huge in in it's cancer a man. statistics. It's a man. Yeah. yeah. Very clearly. But that idea of beating yeah. the odds. It's so um, masculine. It, no. It, no. It's taken such a front and center no. role, and I think, you know, has come up specifically with thinking about odds and cancer. And cancer. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Quite mm -hmm. recently. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also kind of interesting, because it has been the way that cancer has come out of the closet in the last 10, 15 years or so. So it's, that, too, has a double... What do you mean, cancer's coming out of the closet? Well, it used to be such a shameful thing. People didn't talk about it. Yeah. Nobody admitted mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And then through the mm -hmm. 70s, a couple of people started, started to, to. And then mm -hmm. suddenly, right. it was like everywhere, marches. And the um, the use of the wig as a hiding hiding the disease. Yeah. There's less of that. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. So I thought no. that image no. really interestingly kind of Whole played on all of those things, as well as, you know, Stephen Jay Gould doesn't talk at all about the politics of the disease, the fact that mesothelioma is so often linked to asbestos, asbestos exposure. At all. Um, mm -hmm. And so, in fact, mm -hmm. the statistics could be radically different, different. had there been different okay. regulations around I see. it, for example. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. you know, it's got a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, he was a very popular writer, and uh, and I'm sure he didn't want to to, you know, alienate uh, the sort of you know, like, you know, maybe <laughs> yeah. like, you know, the the the, the m military industrial complex tied to yeah. cancer, which you you also so eloquently point out. Yeah. It's so what um. So in terms of thinking about thinking about the two ways that you think that you think about time, I was mm -hmm. also really struck by how you how you were saying that Bergson was at his height during that time mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. came down. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Einstein was mm -hmm. you know, lower for lack of a better word, right. and then kind of just yes. has yeah. keep going and going and going. Yeah. And I'm just yeah. wondering, like, do you relate that to broader notions of philosophy. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, I think, you know, the the um, Einstein and Bergson as, I, as 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 you know from my book, they met in 1922 and they had this face-to-face -face debate. And uh, and I I look at that that date, 1922, as one of the moments in which we see the rise of science and the decline of philosophy. And uh, and it's a particular type of science, it's a particular type of declining philosophy, mainly French continental philosophy. And, um, and it's exemplary of, of these dueling notions of time and modernity, the lived time, the time of our lives, the subjective time and the objective time, the universal time. So definitely we see sort of Einstein ascending, they have this debate, he says you know, to the philosopher, the time of the philosophers does not exist, and that's a big, a big breaking point. But we we have this persisting. I think we saw it in um, in Helga Navanti's uh, talk that we continue to to side with one aspect of time and contrast with the other. What I want to do next or more is to put both of those aspects of time as representative of modernity. Mm -hmm. And uh, and this is where I think my work connects very nicely with, with your work and it connects very nicely with, with this graph, right? You have statistics yeah. and supposedly statistics, the statistical um, uh, second law of thermodynamics, uh, the law of entropy, that's what explains time and progression of time. But statistics gives us the possibility of the counterfactual. Chance, luck, um, all these unconscious you know, aspects. Did she want to live? Did she want to die? Was it psychological? Yep. Did she not get enough, uh, uh, enough care? And uh, that, in a sense, is, is one of the, the, the dilemmas of our 20th century, very, very clearly exemplified in, 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 in this graph. But what I want to, I, I would like to get out of talking with you um, and reading your work is to really sort of say, can we put those in a box as, you know, this was time in the 20th century. Mm -hmm. This is, I think, the title, you know, 100 years of now also 
how can that be a hundred years of now? It sort of counterposes the moment against the, the long time. Put yeah. those two aspects of time in a box and try to figure out a third notion that doesn't give us these dilemmas that ca cause a lot of pain and, 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 and they're very jarring uh, personally. We don't know. And in order to, to, to try to move forward and integrate um, the invisible makers of time, the caring, the sharing, communicating um, um, aspects, aspects of them. Um, yeah, I mean, even so, I'm coming back to the cake yeah, because yeah. it has <laughs> smells so good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's distracting. <laughs> but so yeah, initially, yeah. you thought about yeah. having candles on it, right? And literally lighting the candles and having a kind of communal, communal. Yeah. Yes. And then birthday party. A certain kind of indication, mm -hmm. and, and so mm -hmm. often. Mm -hmm. That's such an interesting mm -hmm. thing because when we were kids, a friend of mine's mother always used to say, well, you know, we celebrate the kid mm -hmm. on the birthday, but really we should be celebrating the mother. <laughs> <That's>, sure, <laughs> sure, 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 yes, yes, And exactly. my mother always yeah, thought she had the, a great the, point. I didn't. <laughs> celebrate the cake maker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and the work yeah. that goes into that. Yeah. But that's, um, yeah. so there... There is something really interesting there about how, I mean, you, you're celebrating the mm -hmm, person mm -hmm, nat mm -hmm. yeah, naturally. That's mm -hmm, what we do. Mm -hmm. But by, but by taking, even taking off the candles mm -hmm. in that age mm -hmm. of the person, you're taking away that marker that right. is supposed to mean so much. Like, are they reading at five? Are they crawling at two? Are they doing whatever it is, right? Exactly. Did That's exactly. Oh. That's exactly the reason why on, on, on second consideration... I wanted to separate this aspect from the calendar, from the goals, from the meeting. And then you told me about this Jimmy Fund campaign of the one more birthday. Yeah, the and it American sounds Cancer Society. Exactly. Had this, and they yeah. had yeah. famous people singing happy birthday happy to birthday. you. Happy <laughs> birthday. And it, it also, I, I think it, it would be hard to get some solace from that kind of birthday of, you know, famous people singing, singing yeah. to you. Guardian of birthdays, yeah. I think yeah. they called it. Or so something. that's yeah. why I thought it was, would be better to illustrate uh, uh, the invisible markers of time to take away the candle and sever it from the calendar Yeah, and, and, and the goals and stress the sharing. Yeah. yeah, which is especially welcome for those of us who are starting to get a lot of candles on our birthday cake. Exactly. <laughs> yes, yes. We need to t start taking, taking, taking the candles off anyway. Yeah. 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 Such no. a good idea. No. Mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But um yeah, another way that I that I that I think my work relates to you is this sort of this this contrast in your book about, you know, the rational the rational way that you're supposed to think about your illness, um, and the contrast with how you're really feeling about the illness. And it's a very beautiful book and what that shows a lot of anger and a lot of frustration. Um, and we don't we don't do that in 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 academic rational rational discourse. Um, yeah, I know. No. So what I was trying to do is um, is also use that bridge. I didn't want it to be a personal account. I didn't it's want not it to a be personal a account. Yeah. 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 Um, but I also yeah. thought that everything that's missing from discussions about cancer mm -hmm. are like this. They're either statistical or they're memoir or their memoir. Exactly. History. They, they, they go into those two poles. Yeah. And it's yeah. really yeah. hard to get a sense of then the burden yeah. no. that the people have to carry yeah. who are the the fulcrums, if you will, of where you, of where these rhetorics all come together. Come together. Yes. And they have to bear the brunt yes. of being mm -hmm. the statistical mm -hmm. object mm -hmm. in so many ways, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. also making all the phone calls to the insurance companies mm -hmm. who are trying mm -hmm. to slot you into different mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. diagnostic categories, and yeah. also bearing the brunt of trying to think about the past, what could have caused this, or where, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. where did it go wrong? What was the misdiagnosis? Right. What happened? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. a way in which that position yes. was so, so such a such a rich Heavy. position yeah. to yeah. kind of theorize yeah. all this from. Right. Um, yeah. And also just meeting all these people who I never ever in a million years would have had to have these, got to have these discussions with. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. 
So, so if I, let me try out um, a historical uh, trajectory um, to see if it makes sense to where did we get go wrong in, 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 in our, not wrong, but how did we get to, to now uh, in, in this, this um, split way of thinking about illness and, uh, and lifespan? So this would start with um, St. Augustine. And I, I go there because he has this very famous, often quoted phrase where he says, um, what is time? If you don't ask me, I know. If you ask me, <laughs> I do not know. So for me, it's a moment in which, you know, part of the problem of time, which is the problem of modernity, you know, Augustine was in the fourth century, is simply ask, you know, when we ask the question, what is time, we are already getting ourselves into trouble because we're asking to inscribe it into a, a discourse, which is a discourse of books, of speaking, of public speaking, um, uh, of being in society. In itself, it's nothing, maybe. It's just what, what stakes come with different accounts of it. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah, posing it in terms of this, you know, big question, what, you know, having to answer the question is the problem. And then after St. Augustine, I would say another person who's at fault would be, um, <laughs> would be Kant. And this is when Kant uh, defines time in terms of the a priori, time and space. And that's another bad moment for somebody who is thinking about time in terms of lifespan and illness because it tells you that you can't touch it, you can't make it. It, it, uh, it starts to, to, to make all these other aspects of, of the sharing, the caring, uh, um, disappear. Mm -hmm. you know, time is out there. Mm -hmm. And then a third person that takes us to our contemporary condition would be Einstein. And that's, you know, the notion of, uh, of st space time, again, related, I think, in, in, in interesting ways with Augustine and with Kant that completely uh, dismisses any subject subjective way of understanding time, but it's just the time of the universe, as you said, you know, in that, in that universe, we seem to just be, you know, little particles floating in. Yeah, yeah. Um, um. So, so this is interesting, because I wonder what would have happened if our session, if we had to mm -hmm. rethink our work in the mm -hmm. context of, say, mm -hmm. the other group, in terms of the Benjamin, mm -hmm. Benjaminian, like, dreamscape or something, uh -huh. how mm -hmm. would we even have to reconstruct mm -hmm you know, a mm -hmm. history of time mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. something with the teleology rather than mm -hmm. just in a big pile of mm -hmm. stuff. Of stuff, you yes. Know? Well, that, I think, the, the Benjamin would, um, would help us stress the ritual aspects of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the birthdays, the things, the, the, the things that repeat over and over again. Um, giving birth, you know, the symbolic... Um, and and which I think would be you know it's the sort of it's the skull, it's the uh, the warrior, um, and the ritualistic. And by stressing the, rit the ritualistic, I think we would have to we would start including these aspects of of eating, ingesting, reproducing, you know, eating, cannibalism, eating our children. And then you would be saying there's nothing a priori about it. If it's purely ritual, about about, uh, about time itself, it was it'd be only through the uh, modes of recognition we had, or yes, I mean, well, I think that there, you know, as you said, in in one of the things would be to say there's an infinite way of 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 of, of seeing of seeing it, but definitely in the modern period, we we uh, I think it's pretty clear that all the ways in which we feel time have been taken outside of um, this sort of valid discourse on temporality. Okay, so then what I want to think of is, okay, then, so what are the stakes? Why do we think about, why do we have so few ways of thinking about that? I mean, we've kind of outlined three or four at most. No, no, and then I come no. back to what you talk about in your book about no. time is money and yeah, the class no. dimensions of that. Yeah. Um, 
And no. so, no. and time, of course, in capitalism right. is so, I mean, it undergirds everything. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. notion then mm -hmm. of wage labor mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah, I think that it's sort of, it's, it's, it's a discourse that is very um, impoverished and going back to sort of Greek Roman notions of time to going back to non-Western notions of time can be salutary. Um, um, and the time, you know, the time is money is, 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 I think it's a wonderful phrase, particularly because we all know how wrong it is. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, how clearly tied to a certain geopolitical situation. You know, if you, if you go to a co in communist countries, time is not money. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's one thing that's also particularly intriguing and somewhat frustrating about studying medicine in the United States. Because time there, time, time in the hospital, money. time with your doctor, Absolutely. doctor's time is not just money, but so very much, much money, money. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the fact yeah. that yeah. we can even, yeah. people can even yeah. afford yeah. cancer care is only right. because they have, only because and only when mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they have insurance that mm -hmm. will pay for mm -hmm. treatments mm -hmm. that are so much more than one could pay themselves. Mm -hmm. So much more mm -hmm. even than mm -hmm. we're actually worth mm -hmm. probably mm -hmm. paying for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 which is, yeah. which is totally irony upon irony yeah, of yeah, yeah. of then what it thinks yeah. thinks then the the, the, the poverty stricken ways in which we think about worth is it worth two hundred thousand dollars for this cancer yeah. treatment that right. will extend people's lives exactly. for sixteen days exactly. and you hear that argument again and again and yeah, again yeah. but never more than at the most superficial level right that yeah. that doesn't even touch rarely yeah. touches how much yeah. money is being made yeah. off those drugs, let it alone is. any of the other questions yeah. that you're and it's, raising. But it's, it's um, you know, I think one of the, the people who popularized the phrase was Benjamin Franklin. And even this, the Haus der Kulturwelt is dedicated, uh, the entrance is dedicated to, to Ben Franklin. And, uh, and again, it speaks to sort of, you know, he doesn't say, should time be money? You know, is time money? It's no question mark there, is time is money. <laughs> Should uh, time be money? Yeah, that exactly. Would be <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Should money be translatable uh, into in, in, into time in the way that it is in capitalist societies, yeah. or, or 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 not? Um, and and as a as a historian, I, I do find it useful to go back to that time when the early. Um, uh, 18th century, when when um, this phrase started to to be to be common, and see what else was it attached to. Uh, what's what are the socioeconomic, political, um, uh, you know, the rise of capitalism structures that that sustain the the time is money, and start with those in order to try to find alternative ways of understanding time that do not put us into the straitjacket of you know either Bergson or Einstein subjective and objective. Yeah. Uh, and that bring out all these invisible pe people, all these invisible actors. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, no, it is the, invisible. The mothers, yeah. the nurses, you know, the mother of, you know, this the you know the birthday cake is really the birthday for the mo you know, the celebration for the mother and Yeah. And uh, I had a whole fantasy on my flight. Yeah, tell this me. morning or <laughs> yesterday morning whenever it was. <laughs> that uh, instead of people going into business class because they've paid a lot more money, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was somebody else, it was like the musicians mm -hmm. who got the special the treatment. treatment. You know, or whoever it could be, it could be so many mm -hmm. different people mm -hmm. who got the special the treatment, treatment and not just the money. And right. there's exactly. nothing particularly exactly. unique about yes. that thought, yeah. except that I hadn't yeah. ever had, had it, before, it before. You know, because no, that whole no, thing no, is no, just no, so no, natural. No, no, it's so wonderful. You know. Um, and it wouldn't be, you know, wouldn't be business class. It would have to be called, you know, yeah, the talent yeah, class, talent class, or, the class. or the moral class. Um, yeah. yeah, people no. who clean the houses, class. Class, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the invisible makers of uh, of time class. Yeah, time. You know, I mean, you know, I, I have been thinking a lot about it in terms of because of the of of writing the book and sort of wanting to finish and wanting to. To do, do the la the write the last sentence and 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 move on uh, of these alternative ways and thinking about it in terms of power relations, um, who waiting you know waiting is always uh, uh, very clearly a giving time that is tied to to power um, uh, events like this giving time to 
to listen to somebody else, mm -hmm. to going going somewhere, and <laughs> what does that say about um, the the structures, the social structures available to us? And so, why was Saturn eating his children? Um, it it's a representation of the ravages of time, of the difficulty of new generations to emerge. And, Especially um, when someone's eating you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> In a certain way. <laughs> no. No. But it takes us, I mean, what I like about it is that, you know, it takes us away from the clock, the skull. Yeah. The, the, yeah, the other, the, bir the, the cake with candles, the birthday cake. No, no. Yeah. 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 So one of the things that I liked um, at the very end of, of your book, you talk about your watch. Mm -hmm. And um, you're right. no longer wearing a watch. I'm wearing a watch, but you're it's not the same watch. watch. But it's not the same. But it's not the same. The the the, sa the same watch. Yeah. Do you mind if I re I read it no, and, sure. and I remind you, remind a little bit, um, remind you what it is and um, and the people in the audience can can this. So you say one night while we were lying in bed, my partner said, "I like your watch." And I said, I'll leave it to you in my will. And she said, okay, but don't specify the details of the watch. And I said, why not? And she said, because in 40 years, when you die battling that dragon, you may not have the same watch. Yes, yeah, so she's a lawyer. Okay. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> and she so she, her point was, if you specify the details of the watch, I might not get the watch because it might be a different watch. Because yeah, no, um, no. And but yeah, I I had written just that down when it had happened. Yeah, but why um, why the focus on on it being a different watch was it was it sort of you know you you will go you know. You will be different. You you after yeah, you go through like this. I, I wanted to inc include it. I hoped it wasn't too cheesy to include it, but I wanted no, to I include it. No, I thought it was absolutely wonderful. Cool. Um, yeah. Because because um, it was but the watch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but then mm -hmm. there also was that little twist in it where of she's the lawyer the, and she's uh, like, well, uh, you know, uh, I really uh, want uh, the watch. watch. <laughs> and, and, and but then also mm -hmm, she mm -hmm. was saying, and it's going to be a long time from now, so you know that, that'll be. So fine. it was the reassuring. Uh, yes. Yeah. But also back to the lawyering that she will get your watch yeah exactly <laughs> after you die exactly. and i will survive you exactly and then the the re referral to the yeah. dragon was mm -hmm. a couple mm -hmm. page earlier mm -hmm. i had talked about how we had an agreement where if you ever mm -hmm. die in an embarrassing way mm -hmm. you have to make something up that makes it sound better and that <laughs> wonderful <laughs> So you signed a contract. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, so it's yes. been great to talk to you. Thank yes, you so no, much. thank you. Yeah. Great to know you in this setting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you all. <laughs>